Hi, I'm Ron Coddington, the editor and publisher of Military Images Magazine. If you're watching this video, it's probably for one of two reasons. One, you may have just subscribed to Military Images and are wanting to learn more about the publication. Or two, you are thinking about subscribing or somehow found us and are just curious. So I thought it would be helpful to give you a little bit of the backstory of why Military Images Magazine exists and a little bit about what we do. Uh, the magazine has its origins in the Civil War centennial. At that time, as the last veterans were passing away and a whole collector's market was beginning to grow around the relics they left behind, Civil War photography became a thing. At first, it was a curiosity. Some dealers who were selling guns gave away the photographs for free. For example, they would sell a musket and say, here's a photograph of a soldier with a musket that looks like yours, and they would give you the photograph. Pretty soon, though, there was a realization that these photographs were historically important and they had value. And so these portraits, these Civil War photographs of soldiers and sailors and others who were somehow involved in the Civil War or were part of the Civil War generation became collectible. That's in the 1960s. By the 1970s, as collectors were growing and the marketplace was becoming more mature, these collectors were interested to know more about these photographs. And so in this era, the pre-digital era, a great way to do that was through magazines. And so a number of collectors' magazines were born in the 1970s. Military images numbered among them coming into play in 1979. The founder, our founding editor, Harry Roach, had a particular interest in Civil War portrait photography. And he was motivated in part by another Civil War collector, a guy that many of you know, his name is William Frazzanito. Um, he is the guy who did all the battlefield investigations. He was the one who was able to take the Matthew Brady and Alexander Gardner photographs, first of Gettysburg and later of Antietam, and locate where they exactly were on the battlefield. Harry Roach, our founding editor, took a look at that work, at Frasnito's work, and he thought, you know, there should be something similar for Civil War portrait photography. And so Harry's idea was, let's start a magazine, and military image, images was the result. In the beginning, Harry cast a fairly wide timeline uh, from 1839 to 1939, he was interested in capturing that whole early period, the first generation, the first hundred years of photography. But early on, the magazine became really focused around the Civil War, and it pretty much stayed that way. So the years passed, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, uh, and um, then uh, we had a few other editors, and so here we are today. I'm the fourth editor of the magazine. I became editor and publisher in 2013, published my first issue in 2014. And by that time, the magazine was really solidly focused around the Civil War. And so I decided to keep the magazine that way, but I wanted to reach out and touch different generations that were connected to the Civil War. So we go back sometimes to the uh, Mexican War will go forward in time up through World War I. As long as we can connect it to the Civil War, we've got something to talk about in the magazine. So that's a bit of an early history of how the magazine came to be. Uh, and so the next question I want to answer for you is what, what is magazine? What is the magazine? What do you get um, if you subscribe? And it's pretty simple. We have two versions, two platforms that we're on. We're in print, our traditional medium, and we're available in digital. 
So the print magazine is quarterly, uh, four times a year. Um, it is 80 pages. Uh, it is full color. And we use high quality stock. Um, this is a thick magazine. Uh, and um, I take great pride in the printing of it. My philosophy is that um, wherever military images goes, however you see us, you should have an awesome experience. So I try to make the magazine, when you look at the images inside the magazine, I want you to feel like you're seeing them in person. So we go to great lengths to do high quality publication. Uh, our color is exacting. Our production values are exacting. And our storytelling is exacting. Um, we spend a lot of time with the network of private collectors and public collections, finding unique images and telling the stories. In fact, our mission is to showcase images, um, to interpret them, and then to preserve them. So those three key ideas are at the heart of the magazine. And the folks who make that possible, that collecting community, those folks who began in the centennial, uh, at this point, almost 60 years ago, um, those, those who are still fortunate and we're fortunate to still have them uh, and others who have been coming into the hobby, they're the lifeblood of the magazine. We also have a great support of advertisers, um, dealers, auction houses, and other folks who are passionate about Civil War photographs. In fact, many of these individuals think of themselves as caretakers. And I can vouch for that. I'm a collector myself. I was a subscriber before I became editor. I, I've been collecting since I was 14 years old. So I have the passion for Civil War photography and the history of photography. So um, that's the print edition. There's a digital version that we also offer. The digital edition has two parts. There is a PDF replica of the print edition. So you can download a high quality, high resolution PDF file and you can scroll through that and it's an exact copy of the print edition. You also get access to our premium password protected site. Um, you'll have your own password to it and you can see all the stories going back to 2015, uh, they're available in this password protected area and they're available in a digital format. So the stories are scrollable. You can see the images, you can read the text and you can search, uh, as I mentioned, going all the way back to 2015. So one more question that I want to answer for you is what's inside each issue? No matter how you're getting us, if you take the print edition, if you take the digital edition, or some folks, a lot of folks actually, will take both. We'll get the print and the digital. Um, they get, uh, there's a lot of stuff inside. So in any given issue, you're going to find five to six feature stories. So that includes a cover story, uh, which could be a focus on a particular state, um, on a particular um, part of the Civil War, perhaps a battle, perhaps a campaign, um, perhaps wounded soldiers, a number of offshoots of the Civil War. Um, so that's that group of feature stories. And then we have a dozen different departments. And those include editor's desk, which is commentary from me. Um, there's mail call, which is feedback from our subscribers. We have Sutler's Row, which is a guide to our advertiser content. There's Military Anthropologist, which is data visualizations of Civil War related statistics. Uh, passing and Review, which as you might, as the name implies, uh, book reviews. There's Photo Sleuth, which is real life accounts of life on the research trail by Kurt Luther. Uh, Antebellum Warriors, which is uh, images and uh, information about uniforms, equipment, and photography from the Mexican War uh, and of regulars and militiamen before the Civil War. Uh, the Honored Few is a profile of a Medal of Honor recipient. Most Hallowed Ground is the profile of an individual who was buried at Arlington National Cemetery. 
Another department is the citizenry, which we dedicate to images of individuals who are part of the Civil War generation. Uh, we have another column called Fakes, Forgeries, and Frauds. That's written by Perry Froney, who has been a longtime watcher of the fraud market. Uh, Perry arms you with the knowledge and tools that you need to counterfeit, uh, to combat counterfeit images. There's Material Culture, who has a guest uh, columnist each issue who talks about uniforms, equipment, weapons, and related objects. We have a section called Stragglers, which are uniquely distinctive images that are contributed from collectors and others who subscribe to the magazine. Uh, we have a couple more to go. Um, behind the Backdrop, which is the origins, the artistry, and the photographers of these images that have unique backdrops. Those are the paintings behind the soldiers. And the author of that column is Adam Ox Fleischer. And the last column is called Vignette, which is episodes of the Civil War, little profiles of individuals and some event that they were involved in by Scott Valentine. Oh, and there is actually one more. Uh, it's, the, it's the last, it's the last page in the issue and it is appropriately called The Last Shot. So there you have it. That's the contents of an issue. There's a lot that's packed in there. Um, and we are trying to really focus on the Civil War and um, to be able to showcase, interpret, and preserve these wonderful portrait photographs of soldiers. So if you're a subscriber, I am really, really delighted that you're with us. I thank you for your support. Without you, we really can't do what we do. Um, if you're thinking about subscribing, take a look uh, wherever you have found us, whether it's on our website, whether it's on social media, check us out. Um, if you would like to subscribe, go to shopmilitaryimages.com and you can see all of our options. If you are maybe thinking about a subscription, but you're not ready to uh, go ahead and plunk down your hard-earned cash to sign up, we offer a trial issue. You can go to our website and check out that uh, trial subscription, which is a free issue um, and a free offer. So um, however you explore, however you find us, um, however you're interested in military images and Civil War photography, um, here's a little bit about uh, Military Images Magazine. So again, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for considering a subscription. Take care.